Hi, I'm Derek Hoffman. And I'm Jeff Webster. And we're the Laser Bros. And today we're here at Four Wall Los Angeles demonstrating DMX input and control functions of Beyond with the Grand MA2 lighting console. Now out of the box, Beyond is capable of four universes of ArtNet input. You can use those input channels to control anything from Panga script, cue selection, all live output parameters, really everything you need for your live laser show. All right, in this video, we're gonna show you how to make the physical connection between your MA lighting rig and your Beyond laser control system. Then we'll go ahead and patch Beyond as a fixture in your MA console, and then we'll enable ArtNet on both devices and verify our settings are good to go. After we establish control of Beyond with our Grand MA console, we'll then demonstrate the built-in DMX input functions of Beyond, as well as giving you some examples of live show control with the rig you see here behind us. All right, let's get right into this. You want to connect Beyond to your Grand MA. In front of us here, we have a common configuration, a notebook PC running Beyond with two flashback threes for ILDA output. Next to it, a Grand MA2 light. We also have an unmanaged gigabit switch and two CAT6 Ethernet cables for connecting our devices. And before we power up, we're going to want to make sure we have a proper network in place. And to do that, we're first going to connect our PC to the switch with one of our CAT6 cables. We'll do the same with our Grand MA. Grand MA2 consoles have two Ethercon ports on their back panel. We'll be using port two because we know this port is always used for the ArtNet connection. Because both MA2 and Beyond support gigabit connection speeds, it's important that we use either Cat5e or Cat6 Ethernet cables. All right, so once we have everything connected and powered up, we'll step over to our MA and patch Beyond just like we would any other fixture. Now, if you're like me, you're not gonna have a fixture profile for Beyond already in your MA. So you'll download that from Pangolin's website and copy it onto a USB stick. We've already done that and we'll uh, insert that into the console now and then move on with patching. Now I have a brand spanking new show file, so we'll walk through step by step. I'm gonna name this layer Pangolin. Now I already know it's not in my library, so I'm just gonna exit out of this window now, over to my fixture types window, and import from my thumb drive. Right, it's right there, and import. Now it's one of our fixture types. So I'll go back to my pangolin as a layer, and I'm gonna add a new fixture to that layer. That's gonna be my laser show designer file right here. We'll just add one of these, because we only plan on controlling one. I'm gonna give that a fixture ID of 100. I'm also gonna change this patch to, I'm gonna to go to universe 10. Start out just one still, but universe 10. What that's gonna do is just keep that away from the rest of our lighting rig. All right, now that Beyond is patched as a fixture, we're gonna to wanna to make sure we've enabled an ArtNet connection. That'll be a universe 10. Once Beyond is patched as a fixture, we're gonna go over to our setup menu and move forward with enabling an ArtNet connection. And we'll do that through the ArtNet folder in the network protocols window. I'm gonna add another ArtNet uh, universe here. And we're gonna select universe 10 here as our local start because as you recall, that's where Beyond's patched. And I just need one universe to be output. And I'm gonna actually, I'll put it on Artnet universe 10 as well just to keep things simple. Now as you see, as I've done that, this is a valid output. You can go over here and select Artnet output active. And that button goes green, you know you're good to go. So as of now, we are sending our net data over universe 10, ready to control beyond. Now that we are done configuring our Grand MA console, we can move over to beyond. Um, but before that, we need to make sure that our network connections are properly set up. First, we must configure our IP address to match that of the console. Uh, the Grand MA console comes default with an IP address in the two range. So we will do that with our adapter here. Scroll down to IPv4 and we'll set our IP address in the two range. Subnet mask to make sure it's 255000. Click OK. And now we are on the same network as the console. From here, We'll go to our settings, DMX ArtNet settings, and enable our input. Make sure the universe is passed into universe 10, like we did on the console. 
You'll see a check mark here. That means that we are now configured. Also make sure that in the input option, the enable FB3 style DMX in control is activated. This makes sure that all these parameters, these 15 parameters, will be controlled via our Grand MA console. Um, this number here will denote the first channel of the fixture that we patched, which is one. Now to confirm that we have Artnet input being sent from our console, we'll check our DMX input here, as well as going to our view settings and showing our DMX Artnet input. Here you can see we already have some values being sent from our console. So now we are fully connected to our Grand MA console. Uh, we can now begin programming. But uh, just to verify that we have control, I'm gonna have Derek on the console select our Beyond fixture and adjust the brightness to confirm that we are connected. And yes, that's working. Great. Thank you, Derek. Now, in case you were wondering, when DMX in is enabled, do you lose control? And no, you don't. Um, any of the changes that are triggered by the DMX input functions in Beyond is in addition to any control changes made by the Beyond user. Uh, Beyond will always hold the most recent control change, whether it is triggered via DMX input or by the operator interacting with the Beyond workspace itself.